Another day, another dollar. Or as they say in ride sharing, about 75 cents per mile. What up, folks? Once again, it is indeed your boy Tim with another ride sharing video, which is what I often state before coming to you with content in regards to the ride sharing world. Many of you folks who regularly watch my content in regards to ride sharing videos may have noticed that the videos I put out are a bit more few and far between. Fact is, I believe I have been shadow banned. Not that I've done anything different, not that I've changed the content or the material I'm prevent presenting, however, the viewership has dropped significantly. And I've had folks in the comments section even state, we believe your videos are being shadow banned because the audience is still there. Um, however, I believe I may have run afoul of YouTube or some of the social media constraints because my mater my material sometimes can be a bit brash. I get it. Ride sharing companies are treating us like shit and I want to feel free to say so. So I do believe that some of the videos due to its brashness, you know, they are monetized. There are advertisers and things like that. Maybe YouTube owned by Google does not quite like that. Also, in, in addition to the shadow banning, another reason why I haven't been posting as much material, fact is I'm not driving the way I used to. The incentives, whether they're streak bonuses, earnings guarantees, or even surge pricing, have been all but non-existent for about a good two months in my market, which is why I'm coming on here. I'd like to know what's happening in your market. Have you still seen consistent earnings guarantees, streak bonuses, or surge pricing in your market? I had a driver in Los Angeles on one of my videos, driving around a greater Los Angeles market, which is one of the biggest markets in America, state that there is no surge pricing. Had a video I posted not long ago of drivers in Las Vegas, another fairly large market, suggesting that during a Beyonce concert, they believe they got ripped off because bringing folks home from a sold out concert like Beyonce, there was no surge pricing. So it's clear that the ride sharing companies are still seeking additional avenues to continue to pay drivers less. And I've said it in all of my videos, I refuse to drive solely at base fare rates. There's just no profit in it. I understand a lot of you folks do. Many of you do not have a day job like yours truly, so you don't have a choice. And my heart goes out to you because I don't understand how drivers operating solely at base fare or even turning a profit it's gotten be above and beyond suggesting that driving at base fare doesn't pay shit. At this point, it's not even profitable. I don't see how some of you folks are driving between 60 and 80 cents per mile, paying three, four dollars per gallon in fuel, and are actually turning a profit at all. It's got to be well in the single digits per hour. Some of you folks are driving around seven, eight bucks an hour is your earnings. I just don't see how you can do it. And that's what I've been stating is that I never will drive for base fare. And that the end result is because they're trying to force us in my market to drive for base fare. I haven't been driving. Not that I don't want to drive. Not that I don't enjoy the freedom, enjoy the uh, being able to meet passengers and things like that. Most of us who engage in ride sharing, it's something we enjoy doing. We enjoy driving for a living. We enjoy meeting folks. We enjoy the interactions. And of course, we enjoy the freedoms. But it has to be profitable. The shit has to be profitable. You're not trying to do this for free. This is not a hobby. This is something you're doing to make money. And it has to be done to make money because it costs money to do it. So if you're driving and you're not making a profit, to some degree, you are actually paying the ride sharing companies to perform trips for them. And there's no way in hell yours truly that I'm going to do that. Now, I also wanted to do a video because there was a, an alleged strike 
in Las Vegas over Labor Day weekend. And I was going to say the same shit I always say. There's not enough unity in ride sharing. And I, to this day, have never heard of a single ride sharing strike that culminated in any benefits for the drivers. I covered a bunch of them. Denver, Los Angeles, New York, Chicago, I believe Detroit, Michigan had one. I've covered a bunch of ride-sharing strikes, including ones that were supposedly nationwide. Too many drivers are either not tuned in to the recommendations that we strike or are simply too desperate to stop driving. And the ride-sharing companies know that. Also, if you want to avoid a strike or you want to prevent a driver from striking, just simply offer them a few extra bucks during the strike. And most drivers, or at least a significant portion of them, will break the strike and go back and drive. Let's say we got an area like Las Vegas where everybody's going on strike. 70, 80% of the drivers go on strike. That would absolutely hurt ride sharing in that market. Immediately, Uber and Lyft would simply start offering big ass bonuses, put in huge surge pricing and things like that. And that 80% of strikers would probably drop down to 30 or 40%. They know that. So as long as those conditions exist, going on strike will never work. We will cover it here because it's worthy of discussion, but I'm going to tell you straight off. I have never been a proponent of rideshare drivers going on strike with the current conditions and lack of unity that we have. But let me know, have you seen any strikes throughout your entire ride-sharing endeavor, whether it's a few months or a few years? Have you ever seen a strike where you look back and said that was a good idea and it got us this or it got us that? All of the gains that yours truly, all of the gains that I've seen in ride sharing has come from going down to City Hall, going down to the council uh, building or whatever the hell it is in your market, and getting politicians to propose laws. All of the gains have come from that. So if you really want to make a difference, go talk to local politicians in mass as opposed to going on strikes. And I will tell you this. To get politicians to potentially listen, Minnesota has shown it. It doesn't mean you're going to get shit out of it, but at least to get them to listen. You don't need all of the drivers. If you can get 10% of the drivers in your market to go down to City Hall and start demanding to talk to a politician, I can guarantee that 10% is likely to get more accomplished at City Hall than they are going on a strike. Just 10% of them, that many people, a few hundred people going down to City Hall can get a hell of a lot more accomplished than taking 10% of drivers out of the driving pool. They'll do just fine with the remaining 90% if 10% go on strike. But let your boy know, have you noticed videos of yours truly being shadow banned? I'm noticing my numbers where they used to be about five times as much viewership. Folks who are certainly interested in the content and material, I'm getting about one-fifth the viewers. I do understand I'm not the only guy that's getting, slowly getting out of the ride sharing business. I know a hell of a lot of you folks are too. But even folks who formerly drove were telling me constantly, they still watch the videos. All of a sudden, that's not happening. Oddly enough, the political videos that I feature, which have nothing to do with ride sharing, a lot of you folks are tuning in and commenting on that. The numbers for that are slightly going up while the numbers for the ride share is going down. Let your boy know in the comments, what the hell am I doing wrong? Catch you in the next video.